My name is Stacy, and I will be doing my project on the evolution of man's best friend. So just a little outline here for you. We'll start with some background, go over the evolutionary timeline. I'll propose to you the central question. We will look at some comparative morphology, and I will end by talking to you about the silver fox experiment. So, the story begins 12,000 years ago when early hunter-gatherers in what is now present-day Israel buried the body of an elderly human cradling a young puppy in their arms. And this is the earliest fossil evidence of dogs' domestication. Over the next 12,000 years, dogs became a central component to our everyday lives. And, just as a fun fact, there are more dogs than babies worldwide. So, evolutionary timeline. Let's start at the beginning. Dogs are descendants of the gray wolf, Canis lupus, and their genomes are 99.8% identical. Now, DNA evidence says that dogs evolved from wolves 100,000 years ago, but the oldest fossil dates to only 33,000 years ago. Either way, whichever date you go off of, this dates the evolution of dogs prior to humans' participation in agriculture, which means dogs were not domesticated just for the use of farming. Also, the bones of wolves have been found buried next to um, early hominid, hominids for over 400,000 years, which means that humans and wolves likely had a relationship prior to dogs' evolution. And the date and domestication, event, number of domestication events remains unclear. We can't, a lot of people agree that it was 100,000 years ago. Some would argue it's agree more with the fossil evidence and say it's 33,000 years ago, and a lot of people say that it's 15,000 years ago, but I'm not sure where they got that number. But the reason that the evolutionary timeline might be messy is because when we look at the mitochondrial DNA evidence, we see that dogs and wolves likely interbred for many years following dogs domestication, and this led to an increase in genetic diversity among the dog populations, but it also kind of blurred the timeline on an evolutionary scale, making it difficult to pinpoint exactly when they were domesticated. So, here is the central question. How exactly do we go from this fierce, mean killer to this? That's my dog sleeping on the coffee table. Far cry from his wolf ancestors. So, I would propose, and many evolutionary biologists would back me on this, in saying that dogs and humans share a natural connection. First of all, they're both social carnivores that hunt in daylight, and very few, or very few animals do that. So, let's look at the, some of the selection pressures that occurred over time. Most would hypothesize that human and wolves began hunting together. They saw an increase in utility from one another. Wolves were good hunters, humans were good hunters, so they decided, hey, why not work together? And wolves who would hunt with humans would gain scraps of food, and those who lived in close proximity to humans got the most benefit, meaning they were the ones that got the, that got the food and at um, maybe in times when food supply was limited, they were the ones that were le more likely to survive, therefore they passed their genes on to the next generation. This led to genetic change over time, and a selective advantage occurred. So over time, these populations of wolves became isolated from their wild comrades, and this led to genetic change over time, and which would eventually alter the wolf's appearance. And these changes, if viewed as desirable, were selected by humans, because as humans, we love to meddle and we love to domesticate things and make different breeds and varieties and subspecies, so that's why we have poodles and Great Danes and everything in between. So here's just a video that kind of goes over the evolution of dogs. It's hotly debated exactly when dogs were domesticated. But there's one thing that both archaeologists and geneticists agree on. Our relationship with dogs goes back thousands of years further than with any other pet. It was a time when we were still hunter-gatherers. Dogs were certainly the first animal to be domesticated. And they fit into 
hunting and gathering societies probably better than any other species out there. This stage when we're, we're hunting and gathering and killing wild animals, after you finish with them, you're creating a relatively large pile of bone and leftover meat, things that these wolves would have been very attracted to. Those wolves that were able to take advantage of that resource and were a little bit less afraid and could approach the human camp were then setting themselves up into a closer relationship with humans. We are carnivores, we are social carnivores, we hunt in groups, and we hunt in daylight. There are not many other species that do that. The wolf is a social carnival that hunts by daylight. And therefore, I think there's natural potential for teamwork between those two species. We became much better hunters with dogs. We are more successfully taking down large game, which means we have more food to eat, which means we can have more offspring, which means the overall populations of, of humans grow. Dog domestication may have helped pave the way for a fundamental change in human lifestyle. It's hard to see how early herders would have moved and protected and guarded their flocks without domestic dogs being in place. And one has to wonder whether agriculture would ever really have made it as a viable alternative to hunting and gathering. Some believe that the influence of dogs on our development was not just important, but pivotal. Dogs absolutely turned the tables. Without dogs, uh, humans would still be hunter-gatherers. Without that initial starting phase of dog domestication, civilization just would not have been possible. Mark Durr said it best when he said the dog is a creation of human and wolves of two equal species that came together at a certain point in history and have been together ever since. So here's some comparative morphology for you. Right here is a wolf skull and right here is the skull of a bull mastiff. Now the most notable changes are the reduction in snout length and also there is a widening of the snout. You also see that the shape of the forehead changes, the slope of it, and also the cranial capacity uh, increases. And the teeth are also reduced in dogs as well. But they still do look quite a bit similar in my opinion. So, given that humans like to domesticate things, it's not surprising that somebody wouldn't try to recreate this uh, evolutionary pressures that created dogs, and in 1959, a Soviet scientist named Dmitry Belyev did exactly that. This is known as the Silver Fox Experiment. So his hypothesis that was, was that by selecting for tameness and tameness alone, that he could create a population of, domestic, of domesticated foxes. These foxes would also show a change in biology, meaning they would have physiological changes in the amount of neurotransmitters and hormones. So he chose the silver fox, which is a close relative to both dogs and wolves, so it was a good choice in my opinion. And he got these foxes from a local fur farm, so they were already more tame, I would say, than foxes in the wild. And he designed a selective breeding program, as I said, to select for one trait that was tameness. And how he selected for this is he began with 30 males and 100 females, and he bred them. And then out of all the pups, they were tested based on how easily they would take food out of a human's hand, if they allowed you to approach their cage, if they'd let you pet them. And those foxes which scored the highest were allowed to breed in the next generation. And they did this over and over again for over 30 generations. And actually, the project is still going on today. And I've been told, if you're lucky enough, you can buy a silver fox, and it'll only set you back about $10,000. So, what were the results of this experiment? Well, the changes in behavior were very drastic. They obviously, they became tame. They were docile, eager to please, they were affectionate, they liked to cuddle unless you hold them, and also, they had lower corticosteroids and higher serotonin levels, which goes back to his original expectations for the experiment that he would also change the biology. 
And the morphological changes that occurred were unexpected, but very exciting. They saw that their tails shortened, their hair became wavy, they had floppy ears, there um, was dwarf and giant breeds that emerged, and they had white markings on them, kind of like what you would see on a border collie. They had the white splashes on their face and their forehead and their paws. So here's a video showing you what a tame silver fox would act like. Very, very eager to get out of it. created um, aggressive foxes by selecting the ones that were the least tame and continuing to breed those and I couldn't find a YouTube clip just showing them but they're drastically different if you walk up to the cage they basically try to attack you so. so what is the conclusion from this experiment well he showed that by selective breeding for tameness he was able to create a population of domestic foxes these foxes also changed in appearance, they looked more like dogs, and that these changes were highly heritable throughout the generations. And that's just a picture of some fox puppies. So, takeaway message from my presentation is that dogs are direct descendants of gray wolf, Canis lupus, and that the human-wolf relationship likely existed for thousands of years prior to domestication. Wolves and humans um, lived in close proximity to one another and they were vital in each other's evolution. And the key selection pressures for the domestication of dogs, I believe, was their ability to live in close proximity to humans, as I previously stated. And this is demonstrated by the silver fox experiment, which shows how the evolution of dogs likely occurred. Any questions? Thank mm -hmm. you.